Hello everyone, it is Toby again from Toby's Urban Sketch. I'm um, bringing you another 10 minute challenge, this time of this little scene up here, using a Unipin fine liner. Gonna have a bit of fun doing a, a sort of, let's call it a semi-detailed um, continuous line drawing of this scene. It's got a lovely flow working out from one side all the way up and then back up to the other. Um, let's see what we make of the drawing and then applying some lovely colours. I'm anticipating lots of blues and a couple of punches of red, something like that. But let's see what develops as we sketch. So we'll get the timer going and I'm going to try working from left to right and see what we make of this scene. So I'm just going to start with this sort of roof which is coming in and don't need a huge amount of detail here because it's quite hard to work out, even from the reference photo, exactly what is going on. Then we've got these lovely trees. So let's get those little rough edges and work our way down to the pavement. And this is kind of setting the scale for the whole image. So important just to be thinking a little bit about how big we want everything to be. I like that this disappears behind this tree. So I'm going to follow this line around before bringing it up. Excuse me for plugging myself, <laughs> but I've got a Skillshare video tutorial, a whole sort of hour and a bit about this kind of drawing, this continuous line drawing. So if you want to learn more in a sort of structured way, feel free to check that out. Link is in the description. Essentially what I'm doing is just building up little bits of layers of detail. And then I'm going to add in some of these punches. I said there'd be some punches of red. Well, there's this sort of car just jutting in. He's a lovely idea get this punch of red later and make him a bit more obviously car shaped so it's easier then we've got this lorry so we can get him in don't know why I'm personifying all my lorries and cars but there we go pop some wheels under let's get this curb because that kind of again sets a lot of the scene up and then we start to work our way across these roof lines so we've got little sort of almost a spire then another roof and it's just about trying to keep track it doesn't have to be perfect by any means it's but trying to keep track of approximately which roof you're on and you look down and you look up always just checking your reference so that you aren't veering too far away now pushing myself for time obviously I'm not going to make this perfect and so we've also got to accept that sometimes we're basing our, our sketch on the, the reference. We're not faithfully to sketching exactly what the reference is. I think I'm doing okay so far. This, um, this line here was a bit of a mistake, but it just doesn't matter. We can sort of work our way um, over it and it will just disappear into the ether of all these marks. Again, I got the perspective wrong there. doesn't matter. Just go over it and then get these lovely little features in. Done it again with the with the chimney, getting the perspective wrong. So I keep angling it sort of up when I should be angling down, if that makes sense. Too much talking, not enough thinking. There you go, finally got one right. These chimneys are also nice opportunities to inject a bit of color, although they're not actually colorful in the reference everyone recognizes a, a bolt of red as a bright chimney when you're doing continuous line drawing you need to find these opportunities to join up your image so these kind of lines going across are great routes ac across literally your image so that you can start working on the other side without just too much random line although random lines are also lovely Let's get these cars in, and these cars are just going to be really vague ovals. But I think you'll find these kind of shapes, you're just getting the idea that there's a windscreen and a bonnet, there's another windscreen and a bonnet. And actually, you know, are they definitely cars? No, but are they showing that there's a sort of busy curb? I would say, yeah, they are. And if we start to add features like little wheels here and there, and if we 
perhaps judicious with our use of colour on them, then yeah, they might they might actually show quite effectively a series of cards. And given the time pressure that I am for no good reason putting on myself, that is fine. This car can have some windows, idea of a bonnet, and then it's just going to fade off. Get this wheel in, it's going to fade into the distance and use it to start working up into this building which also is going to sort of just disappear off like that and we'll get this lovely door in there this arch doorway is too good an opportunity to miss okay so let's get our, our line back and we need to start popping in a couple of windows well i want to there's no need in these lovely windows how are we doing for time? We are on only on five minutes, so we're doing very well for time. And we've got some funny signs coming across. It's important not to overcomplicate this. We're simplifying everything, so if we start getting every detail in, suddenly it will it will stop making sense because the nature of this kind of drawing is a simplification. So let's just get these windows in and move on. And here you can sort of just see lots of vertical lines of windows and doors. They disappear behind our cars. Got some big windows at the top, really big windows at the top. Yeah, they really do look like this. I sort of confuse myself there because if you look at them compared to the windows in the house beside, well, it looks like I've made a massive mistake, but actually they are giant windows. And behind them, some really tiny windows. So just looks like I've made a big error but I promise or at least I don't think I have and we just work away and as we get further away these details become less less important and this side's very much in shadow so we just can start that shadow process off of course I've just gone over my lorry with a load of door lines so let's just reaffirm my lorry's existence there we go and that is the sketch. We have a couple of minutes. Just going to pop in a couple of bit, little details. We have a couple of minutes to apply some loose watercolours. And with something like this, the sketch is actually quite interesting on its own. Um, I'd almost say I'm a little bit anxious that my colours will ruin it. So if you're feeling that way, start gentle and really loose so that you are applying a glaze of colour rather than applying uh, sort of trying to illustrate an image if you like it's a lovely sky this was a photo from the hottest day of the year the hottest day ever in fact in the uk and where we are in the southeast it was allegedly 40 degrees so it was literally the hottest ever in the uk so we're allowed to just make a bit of a meal of this sun and pop to the sky sorry and pop some lovely yellows that you can see like just above all these buildings and then let's just bring these colors through this um, through this scape this landscape get these shadows in by creating some lovely warm tones so this is a mix of various things really it's got some indigo some quinacridone and sienna but it's just things I've been using which are at the bottom of my palette and I'm just going to drop in some more of these dark tones and let them move around. Then use these darks to just come under with some shadows, just in a few places. And under these cars on this pavement. And I'm trying to, I'm sort of trying to suggest shadows which are a bit different from the reference. And that's okay, you can sort of just sometimes decide to do what you want rather than what's exactly there. Aware of the time, still got a couple of minutes, but I want to get these little punches of red in that I kept talking about. So we've got this car, we've got this car, and let's just give these cars some colour. Again, just to show that they're different. A little bit of yellow. And what about a little touch of blue? 
just to run through. Look at that, just disappearing, doing its own thing. And it's going to spread, no doubt, absolutely everywhere. But, you know, that's what watercolours do. And we're just trying to apply a loose glaze, make it a little bit interesting. So let's just encourage that effect. And perhaps just a touch of green over this side. And this, this car can be red as well, but a murky red. Okay, and there you go. So I'm not sure how I'm doing for time. But I think that's my little glaze over my sketch probably done. And I wonder if this is the first time I've ever finished one of these 10 minute challenges early. I'm just going to let this one dry naturally. When you use a hairdryer, which I often do, it will push things around and it gives it an unnatural flatness. Whereas I think the loose colours will look quite pretty if I just let them dry themselves, let them keep moving a little bit, and then we will see what it looks like. So here is my finished sketch, now pretty much dry. And I'm not going to add anything to this. I think I really like it. Um, it's got a lovely flow. These colours going through the middle are really beautiful. And I think this is one of those ones which just feel free to disagree, but for me, it's come out really well and I really enjoy it. You know, let me know in the comments if you think I could have added something or if you would have added something or changed something. Um, and thank you for watching. If you do enjoy, please do like and subscribe. The one thing I am going to do is reinvigorate my signature at the bottom here with the darker pan and then we're all done. So thank you for watching.